Welcome to Wanapedia, your one-stop center for the history of Uganda, although we never neglect the rest of the world. My name is Tony Joffrey Owana, and behind the camera is Herbert Semiano, who ensures that everything I try to do here gets to you in top condition. Um, we are still in lockdown, and uh, like we said last time, Salvation lies in remaining in Yoeri Museveni's ark. You don't have to get there by force. But if you don't board the ark, the floods will find you wherever you are. And when the floods end, you will be history. So let's stick to the directives the President of Uganda is giving us, as well as the directives other leaders are giving us. They will not be nice. They will not be enjoyable, but like medicine, like quinine, like injections. I've never seen anyone being given an injection and he laughs or smiles. That's what most chewers are like. Um, and as we are in this lockdown, it is important to concentrate on consuming local products in what President Museveni calls Buy Uganda, Build Uganda. That's why. My Uzima here is ready for me, made by the National Enterprises Corporation of Uganda's Ministry of Defense, Stroke, UPDF. And I'm also munching Toke biscuits, Matoke products, made by the Presidential Initiative on Banana Industrial Development, an organization led by Mama Professor Reverend Muranga who produces this, which I should munch, really. Mm, mm, mm. You can't believe it. So when you buy Uganda, build Uganda, these are the products to go with. And what do we have now? In the first of our series on the Rwanda Peace Accord that was signed on 4th August 1993, you saw the gathering of world leaders, including our own President Yoweri Museveni, converging on Arusha to witness what was supposed to be the beginning of peace in Rwanda. In this one, you are going to get statements made by the president of Rwanda at that time, Juvenal Abiyarimana, the chairman of the Rwanda Patriotic Front, Colonel Alexis Kanyarengwe, and a statement by the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity, Tanzania's Salim Ahmed Salim. These statements by the two Rwanda leaders are in French but we shall be able to translate them or interpret them for you. Why we leave them in French is because many of you are in French-speaking countries and the originals were indeed made in French. But we have the capacity. Let's take you down to Arusha on the 4th of August, 1993. pour procéder à la signature de l'accord de paix avec le Front Patriotique Rwandais. Un accord de paix devant mettre un terme à la guerre qui, depuis le 1er octobre 1990, voilà déjà deux ans et dix mois qu'elle dure, a apporté au Rwanda le deuil, la misère, la désolation et la faim. Un accord de paix devant permettre à plus d'un million de citoyens rwandais de retourner dans leurs biens en toute sécurité et de se refaire une vie la plus digne possible. Et dès en cela, par la solidarité nationale et internationale. Un accord de paix réglant une fois pour toutes le problème de centaines de milliers de citoyens rwandais
qui ont dû, par le passé, fuir leur pays et trouver leur sécurité en dehors de ces frontières et qui désormais recouvrent de fait le cadre leur permettant d'exercer leur droit de cité chez eux n'importe où au Rwanda. À l'issue des pactations, forcément, parfois âpres et passionnées, tous les enjeux en présence, mais quand l'hypothèse était toujours le même, à savoir, au-delà des différences d'approche, au-delà des états d'âme au demeurant compréhensibles et pardonnables, mettre au point des mécanismes convenus propres à consolider la démocratie au Rwanda et par voie de conséquence à faire aboutir notre volonté commune. President Juvenal Habyarimana said that he was satisfied that after nearly three years of negotiations, his government was to sign in this peace agreement with the compatriots of the RPF. He said that the agreement would allow millions of Rwandans to return to a normal life, assured of security in their own country. He also expected the agreement to solve once and for all the problems that caused hundreds of Rwandans to flee to other countries and for Rwandans to enjoy the rights of citizenship irrespective of where they were. Faustin Birinois, Premier ministre de la République du Zahir et représentant du médiateur, Excellence Monsieur Marechela, Premier ministre et Premier vice-président de la République du de Tanzanie. Excellence Madame Agathe Mimana, Premier ministre de la République rwandaise. Excellence Salim Ahmed Salim, secrétaire général de l'Organisation de l'Unité africaine. Monsieur Vladimir Petrovitsky, représentant du secrétaire général des Nations Unies. Monsieur l'ambassadeur Egezi, représentant du président en exercice de l'ONU. Révérend José Bello Kipenda. Secrétaire général de la conférence des entreprises de toute l'Afrique, Excellences, Mesdames, Messieurs, distingués invités, Mesdames, Messieurs, le gouvernement rwandais et le Front patriotique viennent de signer un accord de paix. Cet accord est l'aboutissement de longues négociations. Celles-ci ont pratiquement été aussi longues que là été la guerre. La première déclaration de cesser le feu par notre mouvement intervenue sans négociation directe entre les partis remonte au 19 octobre 1990, à peine trois semaines après l'éclatement de la guerre. Elle a été suivie par l'accord de cessez le feu de Célèle le 29 mars 1991. Celui-ci a été suivi à son tour par l'accord d'Arusha du 12 juillet 1992. Le cessez le feu d'Arusha, assortissant l'arrêt des hostilités et assortissant l'arrêt des hostilités de garantie fondamentale à caractère politique. En effet, dans les dix jours suivants, l'entrée en vigueur de ce sur le feu, les deux parties devaient engager des négociations portant sur l'installation d'un état de droit dans notre pays, sur le partage du pouvoir et sur la formation d'une armée nationale composée d'éléments provenant des forces gouvernementales et de serre des fonds patriotiques. Les négociations culminent avec la cérémonie d'aujourd'hui. Dans l'accord de paix, les deux parties s'engagent à mettre en terme définitivement à la guerre. 
RPF rebel leader Kano Alexis Kanyarengwe thanked all who had enabled the MRND government and the RPF to reach this agreement. In detail, Kanyarengwe outlined the numerous earlier peace initiatives, which had, however, not delivered, reiterating that today was a momentous occasion in Rwanda's quest for peace. He expected the agreement to end armed hostilities, to restore the rule of law, power sharing among the protagonists, and the delicate matter of creating a new Rwanda army, incorporating combatants from the Rwanda Patriotic Front. Alors que le cessez-le-feu postulé en sursis, en arrêt provisoire des hostilités, la paix implique. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République unie de Tanzanie. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République rwandaise. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République de l'Ouganda. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République du Burundi. Monsieur le représentant du Président de la République arabe d'Égypte et Président en exercice de l'OIWA. Monsieur le représentant du président de la République du Sénégal. Excellence, Monsieur le secrétaire général de l'OUA. Monsieur le représentant du secrétaire général des Nations Unies. Monsieur le représentant du Front patriotique rwandais. Excellence, Monsieur les ambassadeurs, chefs de mission diplomatique. Mesdames et Messieurs. Pour le continent africain tout entier, et pour la communauté internationale. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République unie de Tanzanie. En effet, cet accord a été négocié durant plus d'un an, ici à Arusha même, sous votre haute responsabilité, en qualité de facilitateur de négociations longues, dures et ardues. Le Président de la République du Zahir, que j'ai l'honneur de représenter ici, est parfaitement au courant de la qualité et de la quantité d'énergie diplomatique et de patience au-dessus de toute épreuve que votre gouvernement a dû dépenser sans relâche pour aboutir à les résistus que nous célébrons ce jour. Excellences, Monsieur le Président, Excellences, Monsieur le représentant des chefs d'État, Excellences, Monsieur le secrétaire général de l'OIWA. Excellence, Monsieur le Représentant du Secrétaire Général des Nations Unies. Excellence, Monsieur le Représentant du Front Patriotique Rwandais. Excellence, Monsieur les Ambassadeurs. Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais saisir cette occasion qui m'est offerte pour saluer également, au nom de Son Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République du Zahir, et cela d'une manière particulière. It should be remembered that these peace talks between the Yarimana government and the RPF were initiated by President Mobutu Seseko of Zaire. He was not present at the signing of the accord in Arusha, but was ably represented by his Prime Minister, Faustin Beirindwa. Through Right Honorable Beirindwa, President Mobutu saluted Tanzania's President Hassan Ali Mwinyi for hosting and facilitating the difficult talks. He extended similar thanks to other participants, saying he was fully aware of the amount of diplomatic energy and patience that they had invested in their accord. The Zaire leader also lauded Senegal's President Abdou Diouf, who had led Africa's quest for peace in Rwanda during his tenure as OAU chairman from 1992 to 1993. L'effort combien louable déployé par M. le Président de la République sénégalaise en sa qualité de président en exercice de l'OIOA pour la période de 1992-1993 dans la recherche d'une solution pacifique au conflit rwandais. Distinguished representative of President Abdou of Senegal, distinguished representative of the United Nations Secretary General, on this historic occasion, I should like on behalf of the Organization of African Unity and on my own behalf 
to extend my warm congratulations to President Javier Imana and the government of Rwanda, as well as to Colonel Kanyarengwe in the leadership of the Rwandese Patriotic Front. I should further like to commend them most sincerely for the high sense of responsibility, patriotism, flexibility, and compromise that they have demonstrated in the course of the protracted negotiations that culminated in the, sign, in the peace agreement that they signed today. This welcome and happy development has been realized primarily as a result of the cooperation and commitment to peace by the parties during the negotiations. Indeed, the successful conclusion of the, of the negotiations has been and would always remain the victory of the people of Rwanda, whom I wish most sincerely to salute and congratulate. Your Excellencies, it is significant to note that the achievements of this Arusha Peace Agreement has in part been made possible by the commitment, cooperation, and solidarity of Africa, in particular, the neighboring countries of the region. Ever since the outbreak of hostilities in Rwanda in October 1990, the leaders of the region have spared no effort in order to bring about an immediate cessation of hostilities and to find lasting solutions to the conflict. Today's peace agreement is therefore a result of the efforts deployed in Mwanza, Tanzania, Badolite, Goma, and Sele in Zaire, Zanzibar, Dar es Salaam, and Arusha in Tanzania, and most recently in Kinihira in Rwanda, culminating today in Arusha. The leaders of the region and their people have no doubt left footprints on the path to peace in Rwanda, and therefore deserve our profound thanks and gratitude for their unflinching support to the peace process in Rwanda. My special thanks go to His Excellency President Mobutu Sasiseko, the official mediator, whose earlier efforts no doubt contributed to understanding between the two parties and paved the way for the subsequent negotiations between them. Also deserving special gratitude are Presidents Abdul Diouf of Senegal and Ibrahim Babangida of Nigeria, who in their capacity as chairman of the OAU deployed considerable efforts in promoting the peace process. I also wish to recall with gratitude the consistent support which President Yoweri Museveni gave me at the time he was the current chairman of our organization in our organization's efforts to find a solution to the conflict in Rwanda. Distinguished heads of states and distinguished prime ministers and heads of delegations. Throughout these negotiations, which seemed at times on the verge of collapse, African statesmanship saved the day. In our search for peace in Rwanda, African mediation within the African family was backed and supported by our continental organization, the Organization of African Unity, and assisted by the interest and understanding of the international community. I therefore wish to take this opportunity to thank most sincerely the governments of Belgium, France, Germany, and the United States of America for their invaluable assistance, including both material and financial, to support the peace process in Rwanda. I would equally like to express our gratitude to the United Nations Secretary General, Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali, for the personal efforts he expended for the support and technical assistance his organization has extended to the Organization of African Unity during the entire process of negotiations. In the same vein, I would like to express my uh, sincere appreciation to the OAU member states, namely Mali, Senegal, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe, who, apart from contributions to the OAU regular budget, provided military observers as well as material assistance to the OAU in order to support the work of the Neutral Military Observer Group in Rwanda. As I speak, an expanded Neutral Military Observer Group is taking shape in Rwanda. Contingents from Senegal and Congo have just arrived in Rwanda. 
while those from Egypt, Tunisia, and Zimbabwe are expected in Rwanda not too long from now. We thank those OAU member states for the singular act of solidarity with and support for an African cause, the cause of peace in Rwanda and stability in the region. The commander and other members of the Neutral Military Observer Group did a very commendable job in difficult circumstances and conditions. And I wish to thank, to thank them most sincerely for their dedication to duty. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish at this juncture to place on record our sincere and profound gratitude to President Ali Hassan Mwinyi, the government and people of the United Republic of Tanzania, for the tremendous and sustained efforts they have deployed in order to ensure the successful conclusion of the negotiations, the result of which we are making today. I am aware and indeed appreciative of the considerable sacrifices made by Tanzania as facilitator in pursuit of peace in Rwanda. This required a lot of patience, determination, and commitment on the, gov on the part of the government of Tanzania, its president, its prime minister, its ministers, and its officials, as well as the sustained support and interest of her people. Mr. President, as Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity, I am particularly and sincerely grateful to you and to the government and people of the United Republic of Tanzania for this gesture of solidarity towards Rwanda, a neighboring and sister country of Tanzania. We are encouraged by the fact that where there is the political will and cooperation of the parties, the neighboring countries and the member states, with the support of the international community, as in the case of Rwanda, peace has been achieved through dialogue and negotiations within the African context. What is most significant about the peace agreement we have today is that it is the result of sustained efforts by Africans. It proves that we can make a difference in terms of dealing with our own problems if we have the political resolve and apply ourselves resolutely to the challenge of finding lasting solutions to them. Our achievement today demonstrates that with goodwill, determination, patience, and perseverance, it is possible to resolve our conflicts. It also shows that where we manage to forge unity of purpose and action, where we demonstrate resolve and take the mantle of leadership in an effort to resolve our conflicts, it is possible to garner international solidarity and support. The case of Rwanda is therefore a landmark in our learning process, particularly in the field of conflict prevention, management and resolution. This time around, despite resource limitations and the absence of an effective institutional framework, the Organization of African Unity took up the challenge and strive to maintain the confidence reposited in it by the parties and to live up to the expectations of the member states. In spite of the difficulties encountered, I must say it was indeed a very rewarding experience and above all, our involvement at the different levels of participation and today's results of the Rwanda peace process serve as a vindication of the decision taken recently during the 29th summit of the African Heads of States and Government held in Cairo to create a mechanism within the OAU to deal with conflict prevention, management, and resolution. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this mechanism will enable Africa to be at the core and play a key and central role in all efforts towards achieving peace, security, and stability on the continent. This new institutional framework for collective security through conflict prevention, management, and resolution requires the full support and commitment of all the member states so that it can be transformed into permanent and effective instrument for peace, 
in our continent. Your Excellencies, Heads of States and Government, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate the restoration of peace in Rwanda, the challenge that lies ahead is to ensure that the peace momentum is sustained through the scrupulous observance and implementation of the agreement and the creation of a propitious environment in Rwanda. In this respect, the setting up of the proposed neutral international force will be a crucial step in order to sustain and maintain peace, security, and stability in Rwanda. The international community has therefore an important role to play to keep the peace momentum in that country. As we move towards the elaboration of practical modalities of setting up and deploying that international force, the Organization of African Unity's expanded neutral military observer group will continue to function as an interim measure. I therefore hope that it will be possible for the international community, and in particular, the United Nations Security Council, to finalize consultations on all aspects of the proposed international force as soon as possible, so that the implementation of the peace agreement can commence in earnest occasion. I would also like to reiterate the commitment and determination of the OAU to continue to assist in the peace building process in Rwanda and its efforts towards reconciliation and reconstruction. At the same time, I would like to express my confident hope that the peace in Rwanda will galvanize our commitment and dedication to peace and stability in our continent. The OAU, on its part, remains committed and determined to deploy all efforts aimed at promoting peace security, stability, reconciliation, and harmony on our continent. This is our commitment. It is our agenda. It is our faith. We shall persevere. We shall withstand the challenge. I thank you. That summarizes the second part of this series on the Rwanda Peace Accord. The truth is, it didn't come too much. The ceasefires that had been signed in the past had been breached almost immediately. And some of the provisions were so unrealistic, given the attitudes of the protagonists, that it was almost impossible to implement them. These include, for instance, the integration of the Rwanda Patriotic Front soldiers into the Rwanda National Army, which the Rwanda National Army considered to be permitting foreigners to join their National Army. Now that's a very tricky position. The second one was repatriation of all refugees and resettling them in Rwanda, which the Habyarimana government had steadfastly considered impossible, as I demonstrated when I poured water into a glass. But all these were agreed upon in the agreement. So in the third and last part of the series of this peace agreement, we are going to look at statements made by the very, very many powerful world leaders who attended as observers and witnesses to this historic event, which came to note and then we shall give you highlights of the contents of the agreement and we shall leave it to you to decide in light of what has happened since to find how practical the agreement was and needed yes it was practical another matter that's Owanapedia for you Katse of Tony Geoffrey Owana and young Herbert Semiana, who is always behind there making things happen. Don't forget to eat Toki biscuits. And when you get thirsty during this lockdown imposed on us by the corona invader, punctuate with the Uzima water by Uganda. Build Uganda. <laughs>